Hello everyone, welcome back. This is the second video in OSPF learning series and let's get started. In OSPF, based on the function of a router, we assign them a role. These roles are also often referred to as router types. These are the most common router types and I will go over each one of them in detail. So one thing to note is that a router can have multiple roles based on where it is positioned in the network. For example, a router can act as an ABR and as an ASBR at the same time. The first router type is Backbone Routers. They are the routers which are present inside Area 0. All other areas should connect to Area 0 and that is why Area 0 is called the Backbone Area. So we call the routers inside Area 0 as Backbone Routers. Next one is Internal Routers. They are the routers inside an area. This can be Area 0 or any other area. Only thing is that all its interfaces must belong to the same area. Here in this example, this router is an internal router because all its interfaces belongs to area 1. Whereas this router has one interface in area 0 and one interface in area 1. So these kind of routers are called ABRs or area border routers. Next one is ASBR. When OSPF interacts with some other routing protocols, ASBR is the router which will inject those external routes into OSPF domain. Here in this example, this router is in area 0, but it also connects to another router and they run BGP between them. So these BGP routes will get injected into OSPF domain by this router. So we call this router Autonomous System Boundary Router. Next one is DR and BDR. If there was no DR and BDR roles in multi-axis OSPF network, Multi-axis is nothing but multiple routers are connected to the same L2 domain like you see in this diagram. In that case, all routers will have to exchange their updates with all other members and that will increase the control plane traffic. In this example, there are 6 routers connecting to the same L2 switch. If each router shared their full information with each other, this can introduce lot of control plane traffic. I am just showing the updates sent by 2 routers here. To prevent this update storm, OSPF elects a router with highest priority value as DR and second highest priority value as BDR. So once DR and BDR are elected, all other routers exchanges their full information only with DR and BDR and they are responsible to share this update with the other routers in the same broadcast domain. So this will help in reducing the control plane overhead. Even though I said DR and BDR election is based on priority, it is much more complicated than that. BDR gets elected first and then it gets promoted to DR. If I go into the details of DR BDR, that itself will need a separate video. So if you are interested in the election process, let me know in the comments. Now we are going to take a look at what is LSA and LSDB. Link state database is a table which each OSPF router maintains. And this table will be filled with link state advertisements or LSAs. Inside these LSAs, there will be link state which contains the details of each link participating in OSPF. So in summary, OSPF database contains LSAs and each LSA has information about the network. I have mentioned link state multiple times. What exactly is a link state? Let's check what are the details available inside a link state. The first field inside a link state is link state ID. This denotes the network address of a link which is participating in OSPF. Here in this example, 192.168.10.1 is the address of fast ethernet 0 slash 1 interface. So the link state ID of LSA generated by this router for this particular interface is 192.168.10.0. And the mask will be shown in the net mask field of the link state. Next one is advertising router. This field will have the router ID of the router which originated the LSA. Here in this example, advertising router is 4.4.4 which is the router ID of this particular router. Next is metric and metric in OSPF is cost. So this field will have the cost of the interface. Next one is LS type which stands for link state type. Here LS type says 1 which means it is a type 1 LSA. I will explain what are the different types of LSAs and its use cases now. There are different types of LSAs depending upon the functionality. This classification is based on few things like which router generates the LSA, where the LSA is getting propagated, what are the contents inside these LSAs, etc. 
Since LSIs are the building blocks of OSPF, we need to understand them in details. Let's go over each one of them. Type 1 or router LSI is generated by all OSPF speaking routers and each router in the OSPF generated single type 1 LSI and this is propagated within an area. Now let's take a look at what are the contents inside a type 1 LSI. I will be using this particular lab throughout the video. So we can see the entire OSPF database using show IP OSPF database command. Type 1 LSS will be listed under router link states. So here if you see there is a type 1 LSA for each router in this particular area. If you want to see the contents inside a type 1 LSA, we can use the command show IP OSPF database router and then the LSA ID. So in this type 1 LSA generated by router 3, we can see there are three link states. Let's go over each one of them. Here if you look at the first link state, it says the ID is 3.3.3 .3 and the mask is slash 32, which means this is the loopback of that particular router. So the next link state says that it is going towards neighbor 2.2.2.2 and the IP address of the interface is 10.2.3.3. So this link state has the information of this interface and the IP address of that interface. The next one is what is the network on that interface. Here if you see 10.2.3.0 and the mask is 255.255.255.0. So all the information related to router 3 will be present on the type 1 LSI generated by router 3. The next one is type 2 or network LSI. It is generated by DR and it is propagated within an area. In this example, R1, R12 and R13 belongs to a multi-axis network. So let's see who is selected as the DR. So in order to see who is selected as the DR, let's log into one of the router and issue the command show IP OSPF interface and just mention the interface which is participating in OSPF. GI 0 slash 3. Here we can see that R13 is selected as DR and R12 is selected as BDR. So let's go to R13. So as I just mentioned, DR will be responsible for generating the type 2 LSA. So let us see what are the LSAs originated by R13. So this can be verified by show IP OSPF database self originate. This will show the LSAs originated by R13. We can see that there is a type 1 LSA originated by R13, which every router has to originate. And there is another LSA originated by R13, which says netlink states. So netlink states are the type 2 LSAs or network LSAs. So let us check the contents inside this particular LSA. Show IP OSPF database network and the LSA ID. Here we can see that who are connected to this particular multi-axis network and what is the mask used in all these interfaces and who is selected as the DR. This LSA is propagated within the area. So everyone in this area will be able to map this multi-axis network. Like if you look at this database without looking at the diagram, we will be able to visualize how the network will look like. So if I reiterate, type 2 LSA or network LSA is generated by DR and it contains the information about the members of that particular multi-axis network. Next one is summary LSA or type 3 LSA. This is generated by ABR and it is exchanged between areas. As I mentioned before, type 1 and type 2 LSA stays within an area. Here in this example, all type 1 LSA generated in area 1 stays inside area 1. In that case, area 0 will not be able to understand what is happening inside area 1. To fix that, area border router will generate type 3 LSAs for each network in the other area. This will have the summarized information from all type 1 and type 2 LSAs within that area. Now the question is why do we want to do that? Why not just forward it as type 1 and type 2 LSAs? If you remember, the area concept is to improve the scalability of OSPF. So instead of sharing all the information between areas, ABR uses type 1 and type 2 LSAs within an area and calculates the best part and share those information to other area as type 3 LSA. Each type 3 LSI can be considered as a best route from that area. Now let's look at a type 3 LSI. This R1 belongs to area 0 
and if you look at the ospf database if you look under the type 1 lss we will not be able to see any type 1 lss from area 2 here we are missing 5 6 7 8 but we will be able to see them under summary netlink states these are the type 3 lss here we can see all the area 2 information these are all the type 3 LSAs showing the loopback address of each router in area 2 and these are all the interface address in area 2. We can see the contents of a type 3 LSA by the command show IP OSPF database summary and the link state ID. Here we can see it is originated by the router R4 which is the ABR and the mask of that particular network and that network ID. Next is type 4 LSA or ASBR summary LSA. Even though the name says it's ASBR summary LSA, it is actually generated by ABR and it is advertised between areas. In this topology, R9 is the ASBR because that is where the BGP routes get injected into OSPF. Since OSPF needs to know the entire network topology, we need to let area 2 know that R9 is the ASBR. The type 3 LSA which gets exchanged between areas doesn't have this information. So the ABR R4 will send a type 4 LSA to area 2 and this will have the information that R9 is the ASBR in area 0. So if you log into any router in area 2 and look for the type 4 LSA, show IP OSPF database, ASBR summary will show you the type 4 LSA. Here you can see that R9 is the ASBR and it is originated by R4 which is the ABR. And also we can quickly see who is ASBR and ABR using this command. Show IP OSPF border routers. So this will say that router 4 is ABR and router 9 is ASBR. Just now I mentioned that area 0 need to update area 2 about the ASBR address. But how does area 0 know that R9 is ASBR? So when we redistribute the BGP routes into OSPF in R9, R9 becomes the ASBR. And when R9 generates its type 1 LSA, it will set a E bit in its type 1 LSA to update everyone that it is a ASBR. We can verify this by looking at the router LSA generated by R9. Show IP OSPF database router 9.9.9 .9 .9. here if you see because ebt is set it will say that as boundary router which is an asbr also we can see this data in wireshark i will take a capture on r3 if you expand the type 1 lsa from r9 you can see that inside flags there is ebit which is set for r9 so this e stands for external and there is another bit called b bit B bit will be set for all the type 1 LSA generated by ABR. So this is R for type 1 LSA and we can see that B bit is set. The next one is external LSA or type 4 LSA. In cases where external routes which are not part of OSPF network gets injected into OSPF via redistribution, those external networks are injected as type 5 LSA. So this is done by ASBR and it is propagated across the OSPF domain. Here in this example, R9 and R10 has BGP neighborship and BGP routes are redistributed into OSPF on R9. So all BGP routes are injected into OSPF will be injected as a type 5 LSA. So R9 will be originating type 5 LSAs for each of the BGP routes. So let's verify that. So if you log into any of the routers, and give the command show IP OSPF database external. We can see that 10.10. network is an external network and it is originated by R9, which is ASBR. So the important point is ASBR is the router who generate type 5 LSA and type 5 LSAs are the external routes. Next one is type 7 LSA. In order to cover that, I will have to explain area types. So I will cover area types in upcoming video and while doing that I will be covering type 7 LSA as well. Hope you guys like the video. Thanks for watching.